Welcome to day number 18 of 21 Days of Fasting and Prayer Consecration. Our focus today is unity. Here's what the Word of the Lord teaches us in John chapter 15. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. I'm praying for unity today. As we consecrate, as we continue uh, this amazing journey of spiritual awakening and renewing, spiritual cleansing at the beginning of this year, I pray that God will allow us to understand the role that we play in unity. How important it is us for us to find unity and peace in everything that we do. Sometimes we just have to come to terms with the fact that everything around us is chaotic and people are indifferent and life is forever changing and it feels as though there's nothing that we can actually control. We're being moved by the, the, the synergy of others and the energy of other things and how is it we can ever find this place of unity? We find it when we abide in Him. We find it when we realize that there are certain things that we don't have control over and never will have control over but in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, we have access to the kind of power that will bring us into the spirit of unity. The one word that John uses that I think it's profound, and perhaps this should be our focus point today, that we learn how to abide in God. Just hang out with God. Hang out around the Word of God. Hang out with the thinking of God. Hang around the people of God. People that understand that faith has a different language. Faith is not, uh, as Paul would teach us in 2 Corinthians, faith does not walk by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, faith sees something else. Faith looks beyond what's obvious. Some people see disaster. Faith looks beyond disaster and sees a greater day. Here's, the, here's a statement of faith. Uh, the psalmist said, weeping may endure for a night. That's the situation, but our faith says joy is coming in the morning. It's what we say afterwards. It's how we perceive, it's what we react to. Stuff's going to happen. But when we stay in unity, when we abide in Him, we understand that everything that happens, happens for purpose. And even if it was not to our uh, delight, we can use those situations that we did not even enjoy and bring it to a place of unity. As a, as a, when I was younger, I would watch my mother every Saturday. Saturday was soup day. And I would watch my mother uh, basically use everything that had been left over from the meal from the week, uh, the preceding week. And she'd throw everything into this pot. And I'm looking at all of this, these things saying, individually, I, I'm not sure if I like that. And we look at the ingredients of things and we... we don't connect to the flavor, to the, to the taste. And yet she just kept throwing things into this, into this pot to make soup. And need I say that the end result of that meal was something to behold. Because she understood something that we must understand as we focus on unity. It is the coming together of different ingredients. It's the coming together of different things the coming together of different people, different ideologies. It is the blending of those different things that actually produce something completely different. It's a little of that, but it's not all of that. It's a little of this, but it's not all of this. And when you actually taste the soup, you can see the, the, the taste is wonderful. And you begin to identify the ingredients by saying, I taste a little something it's there, but it's combined with something else. Unity is when God throws everything at us in life. And yet, because of our aspiration, because of our attitude, we use those elements that individually on their own really don't make sense. Individually, this shouldn't help me. Just like individually, I, I would look at these ingredients and say, I don't like these ingredients. But somehow, by the time that soup hit the bowl, eating was on. 
because soup recognizes what we should recognize in life. That it's the combination of things that bring out the best in us. It's the combination of those herbs and those elements and those vegetables and, and those starches. It's the combination. It produces a completely different, unique, combined, collective, unified taste. Unities like that. We have to abide. See, if we don't abide with God, if we don't hang out with God and spend time with God, we'll never know what the combination of God in our lives can actually do. We can't bear fruit of ourselves. We can't do it on our own. We just have to get to the point that we understand that without God, we can't do anything. We'll, we would accomplish. We'll do okay. But just imagine the greater things that we're able to do with the kind of relational, abiding unity of God in, in our lives. I pray today that God would abide with us, that I, I ask that He will, that, that His will be done in us, that there must be relationship. I pray that He abides in us and we in Him. And because He abides in us, we know that He's abiding in us. We know that things are different these days because the fruit is different. The things that we're able to do is different. And the way that we're able to manage things are different because our entire life is now a picture of unity. Pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that we just lay everything at the altar today and just say, Lord, just will you allow me to abide with you? I want to bear fruit. I can't do it by myself. It's a wonderful prayer to say, God, I just don't have it. I can't do it by myself. Some of us uh, live alone. Some of us are single. Some of us are in families. But you can be in a house full and still be so very much alone. God wants you to abide in Him. And He wants to abide in you. Because unless He abides in us and we abide in Him, then we cannot get the job done sufficiently. Praying as always that not our will, but God's will be done. We've put on the, the mantle of prayer for the last uh, 18 days. And we're believing God for everything that He's about to do in our lives. But I pray for unity right now. Pray that your thoughts come together. That our lives not be scattered. I pray that God would bring some rhyme and some rhythm to our choices. And there, there's some theme to our existence. And we're not just bouncing from idea to idea and trying to connect with other energies and other people trying to figure out who we are be whole be connected to God and then let God connect to us those who are already connected into the vine this is how we're going to live our lives it's going to be it's going to be about unity about abiding in God and no matter who comes and goes I abide in him and he abides in me. It's going to come to pass because once we make the statement of faith and believe the word of God, even in John chapter 5, 15 and 4, it says abide in me. If you read further down in the chapter, chapter 15, Jesus says something wonderful. He says, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. God has chosen us to be the resilient individuals to proclaim his name in the earth and to show the world that we can handle stuff and that we don't have to lose our minds and we don't have to be in desperation and peril. But peace and unity, confidence comes from knowing who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we pray about that today? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for unity. Behold how good and how pleasant it is, 133 Psalms, for brethren mm, to, de to dwell together in unity. Father, I thank you today for allowing us to feel the peace of God that passeth all understanding. Thank you for families coming together and for ideals coming together, for plans coming together. So much chaos we've got to work through, but I thank you for unity today that at least for a moment, show me how everything is going to work together for our good. I pray the peace of God, I pray the power of God, even as we come into agreement with the will of God. I pray these things in Jesus' victorious name. Amen and amen.
Love that wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul.